What's up, world? Welcome to the first uh, Sunday vlog of 2019. Don't fear failure. As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. But uh, today's topic is going to be an interesting one. Instead of always talking about African entrepreneur, African entrepreneur, I want to do a vlog about foreign companies and other big ones, foreign companies coming and doing business in Africa. I've been, been lucky enough to meet a few, uh, to talk to, to a few companies doing some interesting technology, looking for, you know, looking at Africa as a market, but also um, being aware of what's happening. So this vlog is going to be very, very interesting because What's happening on the ground kind of changing. This market is no joke. Uh, we're gonna be uh, talking about some mistake companies are making, some of the failures or downsizing happening with some of those companies. So check it out. Well, well, well. What a beautiful Sunday. The sun is on the best shot, but uh, it's been raining all week. So finally had a chance to do some walking, but uh, going back to uh, the topic. Uh, so you see a lot of uh, consolidation happening on the continent from last year. Uh, Tigo left the market. They were bought by uh, Milcom, I think. Uh, you also have a lot of solar company like Mobisol that downsized. Tigo actually sold it to Airtel. I'm predicting that uh, some more telecom company will be consolidating. Solar company, same thing. You see in the solar space, you see a lot of Chinese product flooding the market at a very cheap uh, cost. So it's really affecting the bottom line to a lot of companies. FinTech, same thing. A lot of them will go out of business. And uh, a lot of those companies come from overseas, so, you know, what, what, are, what are they doing wrong? What's some of the strategy, I believe, at least, they should be adopting, you know, to minimize their risk? Uh, and, of course, some industries are more risky than, than others and very competitive. Telecoms and uh, you see fintech. Fintech actually, you know, require a lot of capital. So you see a lot of foreign companies uh, bringing and coming into this space. So a lot of time, and, and again, <laughs> I don't want to speak upon uh, the big companies. I have a lot of resources, spend a lot of money on market research. Uh, it's very, uh, I won't say easy, but it's a different ball game for them. Uh, they can play with taxes and negotiation, etc. Anyway, I'm talking about uh, the, the medium-sized company. Uh, companies that come in and and uh, don't have a lot of resources but I have some of course some of the points I'll mention are very generic of course I'm not going to customize this video is not going to be an hour long that's not what the plan is but uh, a lot of time I see um, companies setting up shop in Africa and trying to build a whole value chain and nine out of ten, it's suicide. It's just that simple. Uh, a lot of time, what you realize is the value chain in Africa, it's totally different than any other continent. Uh, a lot of the value chain is lacking. I've, I spoke about that before. And uh, filling up the gap by themselves is just not the way to go. So I'll give you an example. You're trying to bring a home solar system, right? business okay you need technicians you need transports logistics to to drop them off technicians to uh do maintenance on the equipment uh <clears throat> you need shops for people to come in and look at your product etc 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 that's part of the value chain right well what's happening is that um they're trying to build that whole aspect of the business by themselves and uh 
So the challenge happened is that they don't share the, the value chain with anybody else. You know, they don't uh, work with companies locally to help them build capacity of that value chain. I'll give you a perfect example. There's uh, four or five home solar system in Rwanda. All of them have their own technical team. That's a waste of money. That's a waste of resources. Why not combine, find a company that has a smaller capacity and trying to help them build that capacity, right? So now you pass on that effort to the company, right? And then now you can minimize your costs. You save on taxes, employee taxes, and all those things. You don't have to worry anymore, you know, about, um, but you don't have to, you don't have any more uh, the issue of, uh, you know, trying to take care of all those employees on, on your payroll, all those expenses. Because again, you know, especially in that business, you're dealing with, uh, what you call that, low margins. So you cannot afford to, you know, spend money recklessly. Uh, the other aspect of the business, uh, anyway, the last point I want to bring up is, uh, scalability and scaling again foreign companies i remember i was talking to a, uh, uh, it's a solar kiosk company actually um they had offices in uh six countries staff everything doing themselves they were burning through so much cash oh my god and again i always speak uh, regarding social enterprise. That's what my strength is, my expertise. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're dealing with luxury brand and uh, middle class, it's a different than software because uh, hardware component is different. Software, it's a little bit different. If you have a hardware product, even the software, I mean, business is not always about how much money you make, how much money you can save. You know, I learned that on my previous business. If you cannot increase your margins, trying to find a way to lower your cost of operation. And you need to look for partners. You need to develop partnership program, franchising, licensing, whatever the case that is. You need to find a way to lower your cost of operation because that will go a long way. And I'm gonna end with this. There's a financial, turnarounds happening uh, globally you know it's been over 10 years now the economy worldwide has been going up 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 there's a down there's a down coming up and a lot of those companies that able to live on uh, capital raising that's about to end and if you don't find a way to build a sustainable business you're not gonna make it you either gotta sell consolidate or close those are the only three options you have so the question is you know what's going to happen when that economy downturn is going to happen i don't know but it will happen you can see asia the states usually those are the leading uh, market when they start slowing down the world follows so just build your business on a sustainable way so thanks for watching put some comment down there if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Take care and subscribe.